Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I wanted to make an ultimate guide on the moonshining business in Reddit Online. I promised you guys this as soon as possible. I am now level 20. I'm sorry for kind of the delay in the guide. I was just pretty busy with GTA also, but I've been working on this guide in between and it's finally done here. And this guide will basically teach you everything about the moonshine business, how it works, anything you might need to know, things to avoid, things to get. And if anybody has any other questions, just post them down below. I'll try to reply to as many people as I can, but I hope that you guys enjoy this guide. Now, let's get started. Okay, so now when we're going to be purchasing a moonshine business. The moonshine business, unfortunately, is going to cost 25 gold. This is 10 gold more than the rolls previously for 15 gold, and I don't recommend, you know, buying gold bars for this. Just grind it in the game, play plenty of bounty hunter missions if you have that. If you don't have bounty hunter missions, do a bunch of stranger missions. You can also, you know, do daily challenges, stack up 25 gold, and just buy the moonshine business that way. You only have to spend 25 gold one time. So don't worry about the location. Pick whatever location you think works best for you. You can always change it afterwards for $250. It, it was actually not that much. I wouldn't say it's really cheap, but it wasn't as much as I thought it would be to change. So you can always change it for cash. You only have to pay 25 gold once. As for the location, what location should you get? I don't recommend getting Grizzlies. I think Grizzlies is personally the worst location. That's just my opinion. I got Grizzlies as my first location because I just wanted something up in the mountains, but I ended up regretting it because the terrain up there is just not that good. It's kind of rough. Um, the wagon can hit a bunch of rocks. There's a lot of paths that aren't clear, and you can damage and lose moonshine bottles this way. I'll cover how that works a little bit later. As for Hennington Steed, that area is pretty isolated. It's not that bad in terms of selling, but there's like this big giant like, you know, canyon that's blocking it. So it is, you know, there aren't that many routes to get in there. The bayou, I don't really have a problem with. It's easy access. Tall trees, there is actually a um, fast travel point literally right next to the moonshine shack you might want to take advantage of that if you choose a tall trees location and the last one the heartlands this is probably the most popular one heartlands is a very open area it's easy to access this place i would personally recommend starting out heartlands and heartlands even has one sale location where you sell to the emerald ranch fence and this is literally like right down the street it's literally right down the street from the moonshine shack and that's not all the cell locations there are farther locations but i found it pretty easy to sell from the heartlands location so heartlands in my opinion i think that's the best one personally Okay, so when we purchase the Moonshine business, we are going to have to do two missions to start it off with. The first mission is an equipment mission, and this mission will have to steal a wagon, bring it back to the Moonshine business. The second mission will have to rescue a cook, Marcel, bring him back. Once you complete both of those missions, you're ready to start doing the Moonshine business. Now, I personally recommend, as one of the first things to do, is to just go up to Maggie here. And from Maggie, you can actually purchase a bunch of upgrades. And one of the first things that you can get is you can get the bar expansion upgrade. You first have to buy it with tokens in the roll menu for the Moonshiner. And then right after that, you can buy the bar from her. And then you can buy different decorations for the bar. I personally like a refined decoration. That's personally my favorite. But it's mostly cosmetic in here. However, though, you go to the business upgrades. And the business upgrades, we unlock the condenser at level 5. And then we unlock the polished copper upgrade at level 10. And the polished copper, you get that for free if you link Twitch Prime to your Rockstar Social Club. And basically what both of them do is the condenser that allows you to produce average moonshine, average mash moonshine at level 5. And the polished copper one will let you produce strong moonshine at level 10. Make sure to get those both when you hit level 5 and level 10. Do not forget to get those. They're very important. Okay, so once we get the equipment upgrade and we get Marcel, we're ready to start running our moonshine business. Now, when you guys first get down here in the basement, this is going to seem a little bit confusing, but it's not that bad. Now, the first bar at the top, that one is mash. So that is the ingredients. It's important not to get this confused with the flavor. I got this a little bit confused with the flavor when they were talking about ingredients. Flavoring just represents what kind of flavor it is. The mash, the one at the top, that represents basically all the stuff that Marcel needs to produce the moonshine. That, you always need to get that to start producing. He can produce moonshine with just the mash. He doesn't need the flavor. But if you want to sell, you have to add some kind of flavor to it. And whenever you get mash, it will always be equal to 20 bottles. So it's going to produce exactly 20 bottles of moonshine. And you can only sell 20 bottles of moonshine. 
So the top represents MASH. Now, when you guys go in here, you're going to realize that MASH is sometimes random prices. Sometimes it's like $60, other times it's like $30, other times it's $10. Now, when you first start out and you purchase this for like $60, even for like $30, you're not going to make that much of a profit. But what you can do is you can actually lower the MASH price. And to lower the mash price, to get it down to like $10 like I have here, basically what you have to do is you have to go and talk to Maggie. She's on the first floor. Talk to her. Start up a bootlegging mission. The bootlegging missions are random free mode missions in relation to the moonshine business. And basically in these, you're going to have to do some random activities. You're either going to have to kill revenue agents, which are the new antagonist faction in this DLC. I'll cover those guys a little bit later. So there's one mission where you have to clear out revenue agents roadblock. Sometimes it's going to be really close to you and you have to clear out one roadblock. Other times you have to go really far and you have to clear out two roadblocks. The other missions are missions where you have to actually sneak into an enemy rival moonshining camp and actually try to poison their still without getting detected. I only accomplished this once uh, without getting detected. If you get detected though, don't worry because you can still destroy the moonshine still. You'll just have to deal with more enemies. There's also my personal favorite mission, which is where you have to go to a bar and you have to fight all the rival moonshiners. You have to use your fists, you can't use guns, and then a boss will actually come in and you have to fight him. That's personally my favorite moonshine mission. There's also others like for instance where you have to escort a drunk guy to a jail or you have to escort him to a hotel and there's gonna be people that are gonna try to beat him up there's also more but you should always do these moonshine missions and you should do these moonshine missions at least until you're level 20 even if you don't care about the mash price even if you have plenty of money in this game like I do you should still do the moonshine missions because they give you plenty of XP around 300 XP per mission that will actually help you level up the moonshining role pretty quickly so whenever you have a moonshine mission do it because it reduces mash price and also it gives you a ton of XP and from what I've seen, each bootlegging mission that you do seems to reduce the mash price by $10. I wouldn't do a bootlegging mission when you already have mash because sometimes it doesn't give you the discount when you try to get the second batch of mash. So if you don't have any mash, do a bootlegging mission. It'll give you some XP for the roll and also reduce the price. Now that we've talked about the mash prices, let's talk about the types of mash. Because we have weak mash, we have average mash, and then we have strong mash. And a lot of people have been asking, which one should I use? When you first start out, you're only going to have access to weak mash, so make sure you always you do weak mash until level 5. At level 5, you unlock the average average mash, and at level 10, you unlock the strong mash. At level 15, you unlock a boost where they're all going to be producing at a faster rate. Now, weak produces 20 bottles in 30 minutes. Average produces 20 bottles in 45 minutes, and strong produces 20 bottles in 1 hour. When you get the upgrade level 15, it will then produce weak for 24 minutes, average for 36 minutes, and strong for 48 minutes. Now, which one should you go for? The one that you should always go for is the one that you have unlocked latest. So but before level 5, you can only do weak, so only do weak. Then when you unlock average at level 5, do average, it'll get you more money, and then do strong at level 10, that will get you the most amount of money back. Now this next part is really important. Always choose the best mash available, so in this case for me, I'm, level, I'm past level 10. I'm going to be always choosing strong because it gives me the most amount of money back. Now the next part, flavoring. Always choose a strong mash, but don't always necessarily choose the flavor, unless you're absolutely certain that you have enough time to produce. Now look at the bottom left corner. You guys see how it says buyer's reset, one hour and six minutes. That timer is extremely important, because today's requests, those are the buyers that will give you the most amount of money. Now, Bert Higgins, he's one buyer that will always purchase from you regardless of today's buyers, but he gives you the least amount of money. Today's buyers, today's requests, I should say, they give you the most amount of money back. And on top of that, we also have the All Recipes page on the second tab. Don't really pay attention to that, but use that to, you know, take a picture of all the flavors, what you need to complete each flavor. Now, a flavor takes about 10 minutes to deliver. And as we know, you know, with the upgrade that I have right now, it's going to take 48 minutes to produce. It's going to take exactly 48 minutes to produce Strong Moonshine. I have one hour and five minutes now. I have plenty of time there. Plenty of time. It will produce in time. I already have almost half of the Moonshine balls produced, so I'm going to get one. And the flavoring, it comes in three stars. There's one star, there's two star, and there's three star. 
I personally think two star is the best one because you while you get a little bit less money than three star at three star you have to use oftentimes collectibles you have to use collectible flowers and sometimes even collectible alcohol like Caribbean rum and I personally think that's kind of a waste I think you should always use those collectibles of Madame Nazar because you get more more money with her and you get more XP for that so I personally think two stars are better to get like I said the flavoring will take about 10 minutes to deliver Make sure you pay attention to that timer, and if you won't make it with the timer, let's say for instance you only have 10 minutes, and you know that there's no way that Marcel is going to be able to produce that shipment in 10 minutes, then what you do is just let him produce, you know, 20 bottles, he'll always be producing as long as he has mash, and then when those 10 minutes are up, check whatever flavors you need, and then get those flavors. And as for getting the specific ingredients for that flavor, you can open up your catalog, open up your catalog, check through the provisions page in here. You can get a lot of the stuff like canned strawberries, um, you can get peaches, you can get apples here. All the stuff that you basically need, just go into your catalog and just buy it. You could also loot it in the world or go to a store, but that's going to take much longer. I think it's just better to go to the catalog. As for the herbs, I personally recommend always looking for these because whenever you're exploring, don't don't just be looking for herbs specifically, but as you're exploring, like when you're doing missions, when you're going from town to town, look around. You see a bunch of herbs, stop, you know, pick them up, and chances are you'll get something good. Now, a berry, berries are almost always used in some kind of moonshine, you know, blackberries, raspberries, the evergreen berries. They're always used in moonshine, so whenever you see berries, make sure to pick those up specifically. Some of the other herbs, you can buy them from Madame Lazar. You can't buy all of them, but I personally think it's a waste that she's charging a dollar for each herb. That's not really worth it, in my opinion. Just find them in the world. And check the timer. When the timer is back up, you know, it's back up to 96 minutes, because the buyers reset every, every two in-game days, 96 minutes. Check whatever buyer is available, and then use that flavoring. Check the time. Make sure the time matches how long it's going to produce, and then sell it with that buyer. Now, as for sales, when you're ready to sell with your 20 bottles, you sell it to that buyer that you made the shipment for. In this case, I made it for Charlotte French, $225. Now, for sales, you don't have to worry about other people seeing it on the map. Now, people don't have another icon. As far as I'm speaking right now, there is no icon that will display saying this player is moving a moonshine shipment, just like with, you know, the trader business. When you have the trader business, there is this big icon that pops up on the screen telling people that you're moving a trader sale, and people can then kill you and steal your sale, or they could destroy it and ruin it. And here, people could technically kill you and ruin it, but they only see you on the map. They don't see that this player is moving a moonshine shipment. So you're more safe from other players. But even though you're more safe from other players, there is other you know, things to worry about in regards to moonshine sales that you didn't have to worry about with trader sales. Now, I noticed a lot of people, when they do did trader sales, they would go off-road. They would take shortcuts. Here, you cannot take any kind of shortcuts. You have to take the route that the game tells you to, even if it's the longest route around. And the reason is, is because if you go off-road for even a little bit, even if it's perfectly flat land, the moonshine will start getting damaged and you will start losing bottles. I don't know how that makes any sense. I think that's kind of stupid. If you hit like a bump or something that does more damage, I understand. But why, if you go off-road, even if it's like perfectly flat land, why does the moonshine start taking damage? It doesn't make much sense to me. So to stay on the road at all times, and the second thing that you got to worry about is you got to worry about revenue agents. Now, a very big mistake, and this is probably the biggest mistake with the moonshine business that I see people making, is when the revenue agents pull up, because there's going to be a roadblock. When you pull up to the revenue agent's roadblock, pretty much every route is going to have it. So almost every sale, you're going to encounter revenue agents. And these revenue agents, you can just go right in, and you can stop, and they can check your wagon. Now, I notice a lot of people, what they do is they just stop the wagon and open fire and kill all the revenue agents. You don't want to do that. And the reason you don't want to do that is because if you do that, they will start spawning and they will go after you and then they'll chase you. And if they shoot the back of the wagon, it can take a lot of damage and you could start losing bottles pretty quickly. So you want to stop in this roadblock. And one of three things can happen when you go through the roadblock. The first thing that will happen is they'll just let you through. They won't even check you. They'll just tell you to move on. You just go right through. The second thing that will happen is they'll order you to stop and they'll check your wagon and they'll tell you you're good to go and you can go. And you don't have any enemies spawning. The third thing that can happen, and this is the most rare one, is they will check your wagon, and then they will attack you. They'll say, we got moonshine in the back, and they'll start attacking you. At this point, just get off the wagon, kill all of them, clear out the area. You will have enemies chasing you, but you always want to stop through the roadblock, because if there's a chance that enemies won't chase you, take that chance. 
you know, go through the roadblock. If they attack you, then so be it. At least you tried to avoid the enemies. They'll still chase you. But other times, you can just go right through the roadblock. They'll let you through, and you don't have to deal with the enemies. And these enemies can be really annoying because a bunch of them spawn, and sometimes there's even two on one horse, and they will shoot you, and they'll damage the wagon. Now, another thing that you gotta worry about is, like I was talking about damage earlier, watch out for, like, the routes, because sometimes there'll be, like, a rock in the middle of the road, so you just wanna watch the road as carefully as possible. And some areas could be really difficult to navigate through. Like, in this case, this canyon right here, I was really scared that I was gonna hit either of the walls, and that I was gonna damage a lot of the moonshine. So what I did was, I go into cinematic mode. On the PS4, you just hold down the touchpad. I don't know what button this would be on the Xbox, but you go into cinematic mode, and you still start riding, and basically, kind of like an AI takes over your wagon. It's still your character, but the wagon is going to be going on its own, and you don't really have to worry about it crashing, because it's going to take the automatic route, just like an NPC would. You can also, you can also pull out your gun. If you pull out your gun, this might be even easier than cinematic mode. You just aim your gun, the horse will just pretty much follow the road automatically, so you don't have to worry about bumps. But if you're impatient, you can just take it over on your own and just drive it, but you do run the risk of, you know, hitting a bump, going a little bit off-road, and you can damage the moonshine. And when you damage the moonshine, even if you lose one bottle, that is really going to hurt you if you lose one bottle, because it'll take a massive bonus away, so you always want to try to get all 20 bottles there. Like in this case, I was selling 20 bottles for $225. I lost only one bottle. Doesn't seem like a big deal, right? But even though I lost one out of 20 bottles, I got paid $168 instead of $225. So I lost a massive bonus just because of one bottle. So you want to do your absolute best to try to get the whole shipment there. Watch the roads. Do not go on any bumps. Take the route that the game tells you to. Use either cinematic mode or aim. Make sure you stop at the revenue agent's roadblocks. Let them check you. If they check you and they let you go through, you don't got to worry about them. And that is pretty much it for selling. Now, the final part of this guide, we are going to be covering the bar. And the reason that I saved this for last is because the bar isn't really important in ranking up the moonshine business unless you do some of the daily challenges or the actual new moonshine challenges that they have. It'll give you some XP, but this bar, it's just purely cosmetic. I mean, it is nice. It is cool. There's a lot of NPCs in here. As you know, you upgrade the bar, you produce stronger moonshine, you'll have more NPCs in here. And they, you can even get a band in here, and as part of the Twitch Prime, you got the band for free if you link that to your Rockstar Social Club. This was a nice feature here, nice addition here. You can hang out with people at the bar, you can serve each other drinks. You can also get into kind of like drunken like altercations with people, you know, there's different kind of animations for that. On top of that, one really useful thing about the bar is that depending on the flavor that you give Marcel, so let's say that you give Marcel a three-star, you know, flavor. If you go to your moonshine business, you go to your bar at the back, and you pour and you drink it, you will get three golden cores. Now, this will be, you know, your health, your stamina, and your dead eye. If you have a two-star flavor, you will get a golden core for your health and stamina, and if you get a one-star one star flavor, you will get a go golden core only for your health, but that is still useful for getting golden cores on missions, drinking that moonshine right before you go out, but the bar does not make you any kind of money. There's no kind of mo money to made from the bar. The bar is just a place to hang out with your friends and stuff like that and just kind of mess around. That's pretty much all it's for. It is a nice addition. I just wish that they would have given you like some kind of, you know, a little bit of passive income from the bar. Like I wasn't expecting much, maybe like, you know, an extra $10, $15 a day, maybe like a small box where you could open that up and you could take the money out of there because if you have all these people in your bar, you know, where is the money coming from? Why aren't you making any kind of money from that? Only from sales? Doesn't really make much sense there. But other than that, that is pretty much the the entire moonshine guide i hope that you guys found this helpful if you guys have any questions comments or concerns just post them down below i'll try to answer as many people as i can and if you guys enjoyed the video drop a like and if you're new to my channel enjoy comment subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next one take care everyone